Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Canes in the five minute pool on ICC. They're rated 22 24, and they have a nice little avatar right there. Your ICC rating is too damn high. <laughs> or darn high? I can't really tell. That's a good one. What is this flag? I've noticed this before. Antarctica. I didn't know Antarctica had a flag, but if you didn't know that either, now you know. That's what it looks like. All right, Canes, are you going to play a move? I'm checking to see if you are idle right now. All right, so he tanked 30 seconds and then played D4. Let's play G6. I haven't been doing that well with D4, D5 lately from the black side. I've lost my last couple blitz games with that, so we're switching. We're going for a different system. Let's play C5 and attack the pawn on D4. Usually they just push past with D5 against that. And we could have this so-called Schmid Benoni where I'll play D6 and then white will play E4. I like entering this line when white already has a knight on f3 because that means they can't throw their f-pawn at me as well because sometimes this line can get dangerous. Oh, sneaky. Okay, so they're going to take it into a accelerated dragon. I'll have to call this an accelerated dragon then in the title or maybe just a regular dragon if we get there. Let's play knight f6. I know a little about this line. I wouldn't willingly go into this as black in a tournament game, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but when you play g6 on move 1, you can get some funky move orders and such. Okay, queen there. Let's just castle. So usually they play bishop c4 now. Or did I miss an opportunity for knight g4 on the previous move? I might have. I'll definitely try to play knight g4 if I can. They're going to take. Okay, well, let's take that way. That's standard. If e5, knight d5 sacks a pawn, but I think that's pretty promising for me. Hmm. So maybe I'll just take this one because I feel like I'm going to get good play. Rook b8 or maybe queen a5. Let's go rook b8. I'm not scared of getting checkmated even though their queen is very close to my king. I don't see a scenario where white's going to checkmate me with just that piece. So now I, I was thinking queen a5. Attack the knight with tempo. That will probably draw their queen back to d2. Yeah, otherwise, it was going to be nasty for them. Queen e5 attacks the e4 pawn, but otherwise doesn't look impressive. Maybe, though. Ooh, can I play knight takes e4, knight takes e4, and then queen e5? Just switch the move order up? Because then I'm hitting the knight and the rook, and there's no good way to save both those pieces. So I think that works. Yeah, let's do that. And he has to take. There's not really a choice. So I'll just get this move ready. I won't pre-move it. That's always a little dangerous to pre-move. Um, notice that they castle. I actually don't take the knight. I just make them on a1. <laughs> so let's hope that happens. That'll make it really easy for me. So they have to move the rook or play something like uh, queen c3 or c3 even. Something like that. I think they saw the problem with castling though, if they've used this long. Hmm, maybe I should play g6 on move 1 more often in Blitz. It's pretty entertaining. <laughs> you don't get cool tactics like this out of the Slav. Check. That's for sure. Okay, so they're looking for a trade. Given that I'm up a pawn, I'm probably going to agree to that, but their development is so bad. I kind of I kind of want to keep the queens on the board. I could check on b4 if I want. Nah, let's just play check. the end game. I mean, the end game is better for us. We're just up a pawn for free, practically. Hmm. Let that pawn get down there, or no? I want to play e5 and then, like, bishop f5 or something. I could play bishop f5 right away, but they might play c4. I'm just going to let that pawn get down to h5. I don't care too much to stop it. With the limited material, White's not going to drum up an attack against my king. So let's just play e5, and then my plan is to put the bishop on e6 when it's not impeded by the pawn. That's why I didn't play bishop e6 directly. I'll pre-move this capture, although I don't think white will take. Moving the h-pawn down the board just to take g6 doesn't seem like something white would really be interested in doing. g3? Hmm, maybe g5 or f5? F5 looks good. Let's do that. Expand. And I might play G5 and just push past him. All right, he's going to angle for some squares. Okay, let's play D4. And then I'm going to try to go C5 and then an eventual 
or sorry, e4. I'm going to play c5 and then an eventual d4 if I can. Okay, so let's do that. I predict white will play c3 because that's probably the only good move, trying to blockade. So I think it's going to go c3, and then if I put a rook on d8, probably king e3. And they're going to do everything they can to stop d4 check. King e3, I think, is mandatory now. Maybe, you know what I can do? I can play rook bc8 then. Potentially having in mind, like, d4 check, take, take, and then rook c3. Would that work? Let's think for a second here. So if I play that... Well, at the very least, it's going to make it hard for them. So let's let's do that. Like their rook won't be able to use the h file because it might have to go to the center. This rook, I mean, like rook d2 and then rook hd1. I could try to double up my rooks on the d file too. But that would have worked out the same. This way, at least I'm introducing this idea of d4 check c takes d4, c takes d4 check, rook takes d4, and then rook c3 check. Problem is they have king to d2 attacking that rook. And if I take d4 with check, they take my rook on c3, so it may not work. We'll find out soon enough. Yeah, I think their continuation is kind of acknowledging that they see that line. So does this just give me a pawn? Take, what is their follow-up? c4 and try to win e4, something like that? So d4 check, take, 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 rook check, king d2. Nothing has really changed compared to when I last calculated that. Taking on g4 looks consistent. But I don't want to break up my pawn so much. Okay, I'm just going to bring my king up a little bit. Let's see if they want to take on f5, after which I'll take with the bishop. Hmm. So right now, white is frustrating my attempts to play this d4 move, but on the bright side, I think they're going to be pretty tied down. Certainly in the short term they are, because the rook can't leave the d file. Also, they're getting way low on time. I would play rook d2 here if I were white, because I don't see any other good moves for them. I might play rook d6 on the next move, just looking to double up. Check. Yeah, this, this is too easy of a decision. White had to stop d4 at any cost. You simply can't allow two connected pass pawns like that, as I'm now going to achieve. Yeah, and the clock makes this pretty trivial, but the same thing applies. Okay, and white flags. Well, let's go back and have a look at this one. So this is an unusual move order. White playing knight c3, and then after I played c5, then playing e4 and taking play into a accelerated dragon after I take on d4. I have other alternatives to c5. I could play knight f6 or d5 right here, d6 as well. But I like playing c5 in conjunction with the fianchetto bishop because you're exerting a lot of pressure on d4. So now we have this, and then knight c6. So queen d2, I think, is an inaccuracy, now that I think about it. Um, hmm. They played that bishop d2 move. They must be examining the board as well. But bishop c4 is the normal move right here. Because knight g4 is not yet a major threat, because the queen does guard that square. So after I played castles right here on queen d2, I wondered if this was a move. Knight g4, because the queen is no longer observing that square, probably they would take on c6 and then maybe play like bishop d4 looking to swap the bishops. This may not be much for black. If I play here, I guess I have bishop c5. It looks kind of annoying, stopping me from castling. But something about the early queen d2 seemed off. Again, I'm not an expert in this line, but usually bishop c4 is played instead. So queen d2, castles, and now white made the decision to take on c6, which I don't think is very good. Um, here, had they continued with e5, I think I have a pleasant choice. I'm sure knight g4 is, is good, attacking the bishop and also the pawn. But also knight b5 is good too, because if white does this, they're attacking my rook on b8, but after 
or uh, on a8 rather. But after rook b8, I'm hitting the pawn on b2, and I think black gets a ton of compensation. White's underdeveloped. They're going to have an exposed king, and they're left tending to these pawn weaknesses that they've created. So overall, I don't think this opening was well played by white. Let me turn on the engine right here just to see what's going on. So bishop h6, I took. Bishop h6 to trade off the fee and kettered bishop is a plan that white will often go for in dragon positions, but not usually this early. You don't see it unless, uh, you typically don't see it unless white already has more attacking options on this wing. Like maybe they're ready for h4, h5, and maybe the rook is ready to participate down the h-file. But this early, I kind of question that decision. So I played rook b8, hitting the pawn on b2. If they were to castle, queen b6 looks like a good reply, attacking here and here. So b3 was played, and then I jumped on the undefended knight, queen to a5, attacking c3, queen d2, and this was a nifty tactic. So the way I found this tactic is very typical of how good players calculate. So I mentioned this in my videos before, but when you see a good line, don't immediately jump to play it. Try to twist the move order around in that line that you think is good and see if you can make it even stronger. So I found this line because, as I mentioned, I looked at queen e5 first, attacking the pawn on e4. I thought this looked pretty good, but maybe something like bishop d3, and I wasn't sure about my follow-ups. Uh, as it turns out, knight d5 is very good here because the pawn is pinned to the king, and if knight takes, there's queen Check. takes a1. Uh, but I guess on queen e5, white might also play something more aggressive, like the engine is saying f4, chasing the queen away is a possibility, and black is only a tiny bit better. Uh, but since I knew that white had trouble on e4, and they have trouble on this diagonal from having looked at that queen e5 line, immediately my brain uh, shifts the variation around and plays the second move in the line first. So what if we play knight takes e4 first? Uh, then we're attacking their knight, they have to go here, and undefended pieces under attack, and knight c3 is illegal. So white's going down material. I was really hoping for this line, though. Checkmate. I wanted that to happen so bad. <laughs> but white played the better move, rook d1. Check. Take, and now we're up a pawn, so queen e2, I... Check. Thought about keeping the queens on the board, but I think going into the end game, I had the pawn, and the pawns that I'm up are two central pawns, which is probably good given how many pieces are on the board. This is promising. And then e5, just put the bishop on e6. Hard to do much for white. This was a, a radical decision, f4, trying to stop my expansion. Maybe not such a bad decision, because if they can blockade those dark squares, as they attempted to in the game, perhaps white can hold out down a pawn. So after e4, since I have all these pawns on light squares, I want to try to change that and get some of them on dark squares. So naturally, I would like to play c5 and d4, but white started taking measures against that. They put the pawn on c3, and then they plop the king on e3. But for some reason, they just abandoned the blockade very soon here. They played that rook c1 move and allowed d4 check breaking through, which is equivalent to resigning. You can't do that. So they did this and then played g4. I just played king g7. And we got a trade. G4 was interesting because they're trying to get me to take, after which I thought this pawn would be lost in the long run. Moreover, I didn't like the fact that should I ever play d4, they might be able to play king takes. Probably not right now if that were to happen because I would have bishop d5 check, but that is something that factors in. So I wanted to keep the integrity of my pawn structure, so that's why I didn't take on g4. I played this king g7 move, and after takes, yeah, I think... You're going to see here with the engine, rook d2 should be played. I think white needs to bring the other rook over to assist in guarding against d4 check. All hands on deck to prevent that pawn breakthrough. When they play rook c1, just watch the uh, evaluation jump up. d4 check. Yeah, white can't allow that move. Check. Or yeah, after, after rook c1, d4 check. And here white ran out of time, but after take check. and take, king has to move again, and these pawns are going to have a life of their own soon like say king f2, I think advancing either pawn is good. Usually in these circumstances, when you have two pawns connected to each other, you want to try to advance them in a way that uh, uh, allows for the least likelihood of a blockade. So since I have a light square bishop, usually I'd want to advance them together on dark squares if possible, so that my bishop 
is not inhibited by those pawns. But here, I think the position is so good. I mean, even d3 is going to be quite a sizable advantage. But yeah, probably check. e3 check is even better. King f3, and now d3. This comes with tempo on the bishop. And white's going to be having, having to sacrifice a piece soon. Take, take. Yeah, bishop takes d3. If bishop f1, we can play this and win a piece. It's game over. So several things in that one, uh, especially move order, like being able to change up your move order. That's a very important calculation skill that you want to practice. Don't just play the first good line that you see in a game. If you see a good line, it's promising and it involves multiple moves. Change that move order around. See if you can make that line stronger. Uh, and also, I think um, this there's a little bit of a good discussion about pawn breaks and uh, how you want to arrange your pawns when you're advancing them right around here. So hope you guys enjoyed this game, and I'll be back again soon with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.